Hello everyone, Bashar here. So, uh, as we see, Loki is coming, right? Uh, it has uh, it has been teased for a few days. Uh, so, uh, the four Asgardian gods are coming to raid. Loki, Odin, Thor, and Freya are coming. As far as I uh, know, they will all be uh, from the Barbarian faction. Loki is uh, spirit of its support. Uh, Thor, I think, is force affinity attack, magic affinity attack, magic affinity attack. Freya is force affinity support again, and no force affinity defense. I'm sorry. Loki is. Spirit Affinity Support, Thor is Magic Affinity Attack, Freya is Force Affinity Defense, and uh, Odin is Void Support, so we don't have an HP Champion coming. So this is, so some of you guys have hit the nail on the head, some of, some people said, you know, it would be reminiscent of the Monster Hunter campaign, it is, right, we have the Champions. But I, as far as I've been able to understand it, I don't think they will be going away. I'm not very sure. So, I mean, they obviously get added to our uh, collection permanently. I'm talking about if they will be available afterwards. Uh, well, because of the time limited nature, I think they sh could be going away as well. Couldn't be sure. So, Loki he is the only champion that we have access to by now. And... Yeah, he's the login reward. I think it will start somewhere along next week. Uh, it will have a 14-day loyalty program, uh, just like Aidlin. Uh, so I'm guessing we will be able to obtain his five-star soul along the way. Uh, the others will be available from in-game events, but this time around there are more details provided. Uh, like the monster enter campaign and i think it's a good thing right i mean instead of you know saying something and then you know something else happens just not saying something is you know we are at least not uh getting some expectations we just will see what uh, time brings uh the loki will be available for grabs i think for about two months two months or so but then you know if you have started the program you will have a, ch a chance to still grab it after that date has passed uh, and yeah we will see the other guys and there is also a dungeon you might have heard uh, <coughs> uh, the dungeons boss is odin there will be 30 stages all normal difficulty and it will go you know harder and harder obviously and it will drop a event specific set so this will be the only event specific dungeon i think uh, maybe it has happened before but i am not aware of it so it will be engageable for like two months or so just like you know loki's uh, loyalty program uh, start and end dates uh, you will be able to do it as many times as you like, I'm guessing, you know, for those two months. And after that, I think it will go away, right? So, of course, you know, um, maybe we should prioritize that. And it will be dropping a, a specific gear set, uh, which I think will be revealed later on. So, guys, uh, we don't have the details for the other champions, but we have Loki, as you can see. So let's get into Loki. The look is... The orange hair is a bit much, I think. But still looks good, yeah. Did a good job. So, A1. Flames of Mischief. Obviously, the God of Mischief. Uh, attacks all enemies. Has a 30%, which gets woke up to 50% chance of extending all the debuffs. You know, this is a very powerful ability. And if he's under a Veil or Perfect Veil, it goes up to 70 percent now that is mighty right guys and a1 doing this is pretty mighty with a 70 percent chance and all enemies that's also good you know immediately 
Hydra comes to mind, but I don't think he's a very Hydra champion. Let's read the rest. Select a target. Three turn cooldown, by the way. When it gets booked. If the target is an enemy, block active skills and a block the block buffs. Then if he's under a veil or perfect veil again, does a debuff spread and takes two debuffs and places them on enemy. So guys, of course, you know the Hydra value. While he does something useful, block act active skills is of course, you know, Hydra is immune. Can't do that on Hydra, but you know, you can do block buffs and you can take two debuffs at random. Uh, so one existing debuff and one block buffs. Or, you know, two existing debuffs, whichever it is, and spreads them. If the target is an ally or himself, he can do it himself. He heals that champion by 50% of his HP. That's also good, of course, guys, because this guy is supportive. We can build him with a lot of HP, so the heal could just full heal uh, someone on the brink of death. And three turn cooldown, 50% heal is also pretty strong, right? Places a perfect veil. If this champion is under uh, veil or perfect veil, also applies a buff spread effect and taking a random buff and place it on layer. So which means guys this time around it is uh, a single buff, right? The debuff spread is for do two debuffs, but the buff spread is on for a single buff. And the thing is the wording is a little bit unclear. Uh, generally, guys, it says then. So because it doesn't say then, I don't think the ve perfect veil that this ability gives Loki. Uh, is not valid for this condition. I think he should have it uh, before this ability was ever done because it doesn't say that. We'll see though, maybe it's misworded, right? It's not like this kind of stuff doesn't happen. And the A3 is a four turn cooldown, steals all buffs and all the turn meter. Okay. These effects cannot be resisted if this guy is, so that is might. Right? That is very mighty, okay. That is very, very mighty because I think thanks to a passive, he gets perfect well at the beginning of the fight. I mean, guys, imagine stealing all buffs and stealing all the turn meter. Uh, irresistible. That's a tad bit mighty. And if he couldn't steal the target's turn meter, uh, fills the turn meter of all allies by 15%, also place an increased attack buff on all allies for two turns. So guys, four turn cooldown, two turn duration, that doesn't really go very good. So I think Hydra is out of the question. He does do very little damage. The A1 is beautiful, but the A2 doesn't damage, the A3 doesn't damage, and the A3 just becomes too weak in the case of Hydra. I mean, they did some stuff to make it work in Hydra, but I don't think it's gonna work. So he starts the fight with a two turn perfect veil uh, as a passive and guys that means the a3 the bandit flash at the beginning of the fight is irresistible which is really insane you know you start you steal from the highest turn meter guy which basically means you will be taking another turn right then you do the this one block active skills block buffs yeah, pretty insane. And because you are under veil, you will be able to spread them as well. Okay, also place a perfect veil on this champion one turn for one turn whenever their HP blows 50%. Okay, and that's not on cooldown, guys. So uh, the passive has a four turn cooldown, but that's not the, that part. So, guys, the guy goes to 40%, he gets veil, you heal him a little bit, he goes up to 55%, and he goes down to 20%, and he gets the veil again, right? So, this ability doesn't go into cooldown, right? Just like Marichka's revive. You know, Marichka's uh, block damage ability when you receive poison or bomb or whatever it is, is on cooldown. The revive is not on cooldown. It never goes into cooldown, so she always does it. That's similar. You know, you know logic-wise, right? the abilities are not similar, of course. Has a 15% chance to evade an enemy skill. So I think evade is a new keyword, and we can all guess what it is. Avoids all damage, and I think uh, all debuffs from the skill, I'm guessing, we'll see of course, 
If this champion is under available perfect veil, the evade chance increases to 30%. Wow, God of Mischief indeed. And this is not go this does not go on a cooldown. So if he's under a veil or perfect veil, he avoids stuff 30% of the time. Guys, imagine you are doing PvP and this works three times in a row. You're toast. Dang. If this champion, so this is the active effect. If this champion is in HP below 50% when targeted by an enemy skill, has a 100% chance to evade that skill and all of its accompanying effects. Maybe evade just, just means damage then. This guaranteed evade then goes on cooldown. Wow. Well, this is pretty annoying. I mean, it looks like to me, and he has a 60 accuracy aura. Uh, I mean, I think he's a pretty fine PvP champion, guys. You start with a, a irresistible turn meter steal and buff steal from one guy, right? Then you do the block active skills and block buffs, and you go you know, crazy here. Very high speed, very high accuracy, you know, like Warlord, like. Armands and he I mean if he high rolls enough he can be very frustrating right you can lose to a much weaker team right I mean let's say you are clearly the stronger uh, party and yet they have Loki and you know they get lucky with Loki's evade you know, could be a problem yeah the A1 is of course not very meaningful in PvP but yeah, I mean, altogether pretty good champion. And guys, it's free. And thing is, as I said, I, I feel like, you know, we are going to get a 5-star soul because the loyalty program is on a 14-day uh, duration. And for the first 7 days, generally gives us the champion. And the second 7 uh, gives the 5-star soul. You know, I think, right? We'll see about it when it arrives, but... Uh, and guys, so the thing is, this champion with a 5-star soul, right? Obviously, because he has very high accuracy. Uh, well, not obviously, maybe, but... Uh, Polymorph is a very good blessing for him. Right? Because he has very high accuracy, so he will be able to land the Polymorph. I don't think Intimidating Presence is you know, very required. Maybe Temporal Chains? Yeah. Yeah, he is pretty good. That's about it. And we will, you know, talk about Freya, Odin, and Thor when they arrive. We will see how it works. Well, this is a, a good campaign. Uh, and let's also see how the dungeon goes. I'm curious about the dungeon. Uh, I'm curious about the set. We will see how it goes. And I will see you guys on stream. Bye-bye.